To replicate is to make a copy. So here, replication means making a copy. We're talking about DNA replication, so it means we're making a copy of DNA. Here, replication has got its purpose is to increase the number of DNA molecules in the nucleus. So here, let us see exactly what happens during this process. So remember that DNA contains two strands, which is a which is a chain of polynucleotides. So in this case, we did not show our nucleotides, but then we just showed the strands that are actually made up of nucleotides. So here, these strands are connected with nitrogenous bases, and remember that nitrogenous base A, which is added always links up to T which is thymine and then cytosine which is uh, which is C links up to G which is guanine so it means that here we are trying to make an exact copy of DNA but then how do we make an exact copy of DNA so you can see that this structure called the double helix so this structure you can see here of uh, these strands is called the double helix structure so this double helix structure, the first thing that has to happen, it has to unwind. By that, it simply means that the strands have to not be twisted. You can see that here they are twisted, they are twisted, they are twisted, red into blue and blue into red. But then in this case, when this structure unwinds, what will happen? They will be separate. Let me just diagrammatically represent it. So the, our process one, the DNA uh, strand, the, the DNA double helix will actually do it, will unwind. So by that, it means that this strand here, will be on its own and then this one will be on its own but then they are still connected with those nitrogenous bases adenine is connected to thymine cytosine is connected to guanine thymine is connected to adenine and then guanine is connected to cytosine so you can see that here this is what this is our dna molecule given that it has got what it has got this blue strand and then it's got also what this red strand so these are connected by nitrogenous bases adenine thymine cytosine guanine remember that they always work in pairs so these are called nitrogenous base pairs so what happens after the unwinding by unwinding you can see that here they were twisted they had a double helix structure but then here they did what they unwind it or it kind of unzipped in a way so here this is process number one so what happens in process number two in process number two the weak hydrogen bonds that are connected the nitrogenous base pairs will be broken so here remember that when you say we have got uh, two nucleotides with a nitrogenous base, they are connected by weak hydrogen bonds. So these are hydrogen bonds that are connecting two nucleotides, or rather two nitrogenous bases. So what happens here? Those weak hydrogen bonds will break when this double helix structure unwinds. So by that it means that these nitrogenous bases will be what? Will be separated from each other. Therefore these strands won't be connected anymore because these nitrogenous bases are the reasons for these two strands which is blue and red to be connected. Otherwise they wouldn't. So here by that it means that they will do what? They will separate. So process number two here it is the breaking of the weak hydrogen bonds between the nitrogenous base pairs, which is adenine thymine, cytosine, guanine. So here we have got now two separate strands. So this is process number three. That's what's going to happen here. We have got two separate DNA strands. So this one still contains adenine, cytosine, thymine, and then this contains guanine. And then this side contains thymine, contains guanine, contains adenine, and then contains cytosine. Remember that we are, we are just talking about this strand over here, and then over here as well, we're talking about this strand. So let me just represent it with an appropriate color. So here you can see that we're having these two strands separated from each other. So what's happening now? So here, remember that the DNA molecule or the DNA strand is made of a chain of polynucleotides or a chain of many nucleotides. Nucleotides are simply these things that, that contain what? 
a phosphate, they contain what? They contain a sugar and then they contain a nitrogenous base. So in a cell, in a cell, uh, rather in a, in a nucleus, in the nucleoplasm, we always find those nucleotides lying around, lying around, lying around. So what will happen? Those nucleotides will be linked up to these strands. So it means that these strands will be serving as templates. So when you're talking about templates, it means that it is where something can be built. So in this case, these two strands, this blue and red strand, will act as templates whereby the other uh, strand will be built. But then what do we use to do that? We use the, the DNA nucleotides in the nucleoplasm. So the DNA nucleotides, remember that they have something like this. Let's say this one contains thymine. This one contains thymine, so it's just a free nucleotide because it is not bonded to anything. So what will happen to this nucleotide? Because thymine always links up with adenine, so it means that this thymine will walk up to the adenine and then link up. You can see that we are now starting a new chain. So let me just represent that with green. So this thymine is linking up with what? With an adenine. So a similar thing will happen. A nucleotide that contains uh, guanine here, that contains a G, it means it will link up with what? It will link up with cytosine. So here, a G will link up. And then same thing will continue happening. And then the thymine will look for a nucleotide that contains the nitrogenous space adenine. Remember that these always work in pairs. So these two nitrogenous spaces are complementary because they match up with each other. They can have a weak hydrogen bond between each other. So a, a, a G, which is a guanine, will always look for what? For a C, which is a cytosine. So a nucleotide, just the, a nucleotide that contains a cytosine will be linked up with what? With this G. So what will happen? These will form what? These will form a strand. So you can see now that we are having here two DNA strands. So here now we're having what? Two DNA strands. So what will happen here? At this other strand, it also serves as a template whereby the other strand will be built. So here, this thymine will look for a nucleotide with A. And then this G will look for a nucleotide with C. This A, a nucleotide with T. Uh, T, I mean, and then this C with a nucleotide with G. So they also create another strand. So you can see that here we are creating what? We are creating strands or chains of polynucleotides. So what will happen here? After they've created a strand, remember that they are joined by what? Weak hydrogen bonds. So what will happen? Then they will be twisted and they will make a double helix again. So in this case, we'll have something like this. And then this one will be also twisted in here to make a double helix. So they will have their nitrogenous bases here, which are connecting these two strands together. And you can see now that this is what? Another DNA molecule. Same thing will happen that other side here. You can see here this will and this will this will join this will join in with this blue strand to make another DNA molecule. So these are bonded by what? By weak hydrogen bonds. So they are connected by these nitrogen spaces. So you can see now, in the beginning we had what? We had only one DNA molecule over here. So that's one DNA molecule containing two strands. But then at the end, we now have what? We now have two DNA molecules. So it means that the DNA has replicated or it has made an exact copy of itself. Don't forget to subscribe. Stay tuned for our next video.